Hey, everybody. Hope you are doing well. Um, move some things around here, but fingers crossed everything should turn out well. We're going to do a King's X song right now. We're going to do the song Mud. Now, it's funny because the, <laughs> the title's interesting to me because to me it's sort of a ballad or kind of a, a requiem, you know, a bit of a um, tribute to uh, a life lost. Um, but it's incredibly heavy. Uh, it's just fabulously heavy and chunky. So with that said, here's King's X song, Mud.
Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and it's just because it's what the st- song is is making me think of. And honestly, I think about this every single time I hear the song. Um, <clears throat> I've lost a lot of important people in my life over the years. Um, of my three sisters, I've lost two of them. Of my two parents, I've lost one of them. And I lost my best friend. They've all passed away. I did not get a chance to say goodbye to either of my two sisters or my best friend, but I did get a chance to say goodbye to my father. Now, I live about 3,500 miles away from the home I grew up in where my family, my parents still live. At least my mother does now. And so my, my dad was battling cancer and it is something that absolutely ravaged his body incredibly quickly. It was a form of brain cancer and a form of lung cancer. Now, honestly, the lung cancer isn't really all that surprising to me, given how much he smoked in his life when I was growing up. But then also the fact that he was a uh, he was a volunteer firefighter for many years, and he was in the Marine Corps for well, six years anyway. He also worked quite a bit around um, newspaper printing presses and stuff like that. So back in the 70s, 60s and 70s and 80s, um, you know, the the health controls uh, were not in place uh, the way that they are today. So, you know, it's just, you know, that when you do what he did for a living and over the course of his entire life at a certain point, especially when he was a two pack a day smoker, you kind of expect lung cancer to happen at some point. I mean, you don't wish it would, but you kind of expect it to. And yet still he managed to, he he quit smoking cold Turkey when I was a teenager. So he lived a long time after he quit smoking. Um, but, well, I mean, he was diagnosed with cancer in the late fall, early winter, and he was gone before the spring. Uh, he passed away in, I believe, April. And um, I got to t- talk to him on the phone. He was in hospice, and I got this phone call one day, and it was basically saying he's not going to make it much longer. Um, and then I talked to him and he told me that he was, um, not going to make it much longer. And, um, but he told me, uh, if I couldn't make it home before he passed, that it was okay. And as hard as I tried to get a airplane, air, air, airline ticket, a flight ticket, to get back there in time, he's just there was there was no way he he knew he was going. Um, he held on as long as he could because my sister's birthday had approached. My one last living sister's birthday had approached, and. Um, he didn't want to die on her birthday. So he held out an extra day so that my sister's birthday, that my sister wouldn't remember, you know, her father dying on her birthday. So he passed away the next day, the next morning. And I firmly believe that that was just willpower. You know, it's amazing what people will do in their last moments just to hang on for an extra moment. To, if they can ha- if they can help it, if they can push themselves, they will exhaust any energy they can to do as much as they can. And and I and I, 
I can't say that I witnessed it because I, I got there the day after he passed away. Um, I just could not get there fast enough. But he 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 passed away the day after. And so the song, every time I hear the lyrics in the song, it brings up that memory. And the thing that's the most shocking about the whole situation was before we got off the phone, he said, I love you. And, and that is not something that was um, something he said very often. I don't, I don't know whether it was that generation. I don't know whether it was just his upbringing. I don't know if his parents said that to him all that much. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't speak to that. I know that in my lifetime, I can count the number of times he said I love you to me on one hand. And it um, it really hit me. I mean, I knew that was the last time I was talking to him. I There wasn't a chance in hell I was going to get back there in time because when he said that, I was like, okay, he, he knows he's passing. Um, I said my piece with the whole thing in those couple of days that I knew he was gone and I couldn't get back there in time. I, I said my piece of the whole thing because he said, I love you. And so I didn't actually cry at the funeral. If anything, I laughed at the funeral because there were some stories that were told during the calling hours by some of his long life, long friends that just cracked me up. They were just, they were funny stories and I think it was really nice to lift the somber mood to have those those humorous anecdotes shared and celebrating the life rather than mourning the life. Um, and so I, I let out, like, from the deepest part of my gut kind of laughter, which I think in retrospect, actually gave other people in the funeral home the freedom to feel like they could laugh too because, um, you know, my my sister was crying. My mother was teared up, obviously. That was her husband for well over, you know, well over 30 years. Um, but but because I laughed, it gave other people the the. It, I, again, I feel like it gave other people the freedom to um, to laugh and find joy in the celebration of a life very well lived. Um, he was the kind of person who lived in service of others, always. Uh, whether you're talking about all his time as a as a volunteer firefighter, his time spent as a um, an EMT on an ambulance crew, uh, his time spent in the Marines during Vietnam, uh, his time spent, you know, in, in the newspaper industry, um, and his time, of course, he, he was, he was spent time counseling, you know, Eagles, he was an Eagle Scout, so he spent time counseling Boy Scouts. I think he was closer to other people than he was to his own son, to be completely honest with you. We didn't have the greatest relationship of all time. I'm not saying that. I respected him, but I didn't necessarily want to be him. And um, I was a completely different kind of person. I'm much more into music and the arts, and he was very, you know, analytical and and um, just a very hard worker. And I got my work ethic from him, but little else, I think. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's pure speculation on all that. But it was it was a very, 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 and even right now I'm getting choked. I'm more choked up right now thinking back about it than I, than I was during the whole, you know, uh, funeral and calling hours and, and everything. Um, and I don't really know why I'm sharing this with you all except for Again, when I do these videos, I'm telling you what's going through my mind as we're 
both listening to the song together. I know the song inside and out. I've heard this song dozens and dozens of times. And I this this particular instance is something that it, I, I get, it catches me every time I hear this song. Other songs that I've reacted to, you know, I'm thinking free form. It's just coming out in the moment. And, and it may be something I've never thought of before. But in this particular instance, this song chokes me up every single time. And I, I wish I had had the opportunity to say goodbye to my best friend. And I wish I had had the opportunity to say goodbye to my sister, sisters. Um, but I didn't. Uh, their, their passings were more, much more sudden. Um, my father, however, that phone call, I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to haunt me for the rest of my life, but it probably will get me every time I hear this song. I know that much. And, um, the, the one thing that I want to leave you with before I sign off for this video is that just a, you know, if, if you love somebody, let them know. Because, again, I didn't hear it all that often from my father. And honestly, I didn't hear it. I haven't heard it all that often from my mother. But I've heard it from my mother more and more since my father has passed away. And, um, and again, just, just let people know that you care about them. You know, I, I, I tell more people that I love them now than I ever have in my life before. And it's, it's a really, really good feeling to, you know, just let people you care about know that you care about them. It, it's, it's a level of support and it's a level of fondness and, and recognition and just connectivity that we have with one another. And the way that the world is right now with all of the, um, you know, social media and algorithmic separations that we have pushing us further apart and and not really uh opening communication as much as it had initially promised when when you know the internet first came online you know it was going to connect people it was going to be the freedom of information and people were going to be able to understand and but then you know these companies to make more money to get more information put algorithms into the system so that they reinforce what people might think that they actually believe. And it causes this separation and this, this um, schism between people that just, you know, makes people not want to be friends with one another and not want to communicate with one another and yet maybe you want to communicate with people who are just going to reinforce these twisted beliefs that they might have or what have you. It's a long way for me to go to sit there and say, just, just remember that we're all on this shiny blue ball together and we all bleed red and we all breathe the oxygen and we all live under the same sun and we really don't have as many differences as the the world might have you think that we have we just don't and um so again i i just urge you to you know break down that communication and open up and and share your affections for one another and support one another as much as you can and tell for god's sake tell people that you love them you know and and don't let the ugliness that that is floating around in the world right now tear apart what is just naturally a good thing um that 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 that's all i gotta say um thanks for watching please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below um uh, if you would, let me know if anything is, you know, like if, if the, the microphone's not loud enough, if the music's too loud, whatever it is, just let me know because I've, I've moved some stuff around here and I've had to reset it up and, you know, yeah. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I appreciate you um, and I wish you well. Take care.